Yo, 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 what's poppin' everybody? It's your boy Mike Gomes again with another real estate educational video. Today, we're gonna go over the next step after all the steps of the sales process. So you have all the steps of the sales process, but then you need techniques to get through the sales process. So we're gonna go through that. But if these videos have been giving you any value and you're like, holy crap, I've been getting some deals or I've been moving the needle a little bit in my business, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, I appreciate y'all. Let's get to it. So these are techniques to get through the eight-step sales process. So if you watch my previous video, there was a video I did on the eight-step sales process, all the buckets that you got to fill up in order to close a deal. So what this is going to be, this is going to be the seven techniques that we use in order to get through the sales process. So starting off with number one, probably the most important. This is confidence. This, the prospect needs to be like, yo, this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy feels, I feel comfortable with this guy. I feel like this guy can get a deal done. Here's how confident you have to be. Um, the tone of this, you essentially need to sound like you and your friend are having a conversation about a hobby that you know, like the back of your hands. Maybe you really, really understand um let's call it football right let's just say you're a crazy big football fan and you're a patriot fan at that and you know every single thing about the patriot you know every single player coach all that you're talking to your friend like you know what the heck you're talking about that's the type of confidence that you have to have and the prospect has to feel that number two mirror so what does this mean? This means essentially you have to match their energy. Now, a lot of people treat it like you have to be a freaking chameleon. And let's just say somebody, um, let's just say somebody's super analytical and some, maybe you can call them nerdy or something like that. You don't have to go in and talk like a, a nerd or whatever, right? But if they're just hanging out and their voice is kind of just chilling, you don't want to be all the way up here, like going fast and because... That's not, that doesn't vibe with them. They don't vibe with that. So essentially you just have to match their energy. So match energy. So for perfect example, um, I'm doing a deal right now with this lady who needs to be moved into a mobile home. And whenever she talks, she's just talking super low and she's calm. So while I'm talking, I'm talking super low and I'm talking super calm. I'm not all the way up here, like going crazy, right? I'm making her feel good. I'm making her feel comfortable. Number three, actively listen. So what does this mean? This means like why you're talking to somebody, really, truly hearing them. Like, let's just say you were on a date. You're on a date, right? And you're on a date with a female at one of you guys' favorite restaurants or something like that. The female wants to feel like, they're being listened to like they want to be followed up with on what they're talking about so let's just say they're talking about their work and maybe they're a real estate agent or something like that and they're talking about deals like you're truly listening about the deals and you're asking follow-up questions about those deals like you're actually truly listening they feel you being present in the moment so i think that's a really good way to put this being present so be present in the conversation don't be over there taking notes. Don't be just thinking about what you have to say next. Like truly have a conversation and listen to somebody. Number four. This almost goes along with actively listening. It's a little bit different though. So curiosity, what does this mean? This means you really want to know what they have to say. So one, they have to feel it. You have to be present. That's why it kind of, go, it kind of goes along with actively listening. But here's one thing that I put here. So a lot of the times we we want to feel like we know absolutely everything. For me, I don't do that. I act like I don't know anything. Well, I call that the dummy curve. So I'm being super curious. Like, wait, how how long have you owned this property for? And you could hear it in my voice that I that I really truly sound like I don't know, even though I maybe do, maybe I can see on my records that, right? Like maybe I'm, I'm on prop stream and I can see that they own this property for 30 years or something. 
but to the seller, they hear it in my voice that I'm so curious that you have to answer me. Like you hear the curiosity in my voice. You have no choice but to answer me. Okay. Number five. So if you're a good salesman, not too many of these come up because you take care of them before they come up. But a lot of the times they do come up. So an objection, right? An objection to me isn't really an, an objection. It's more of like a complaint. So what do I do with objections? I essentially address them, right? And then I move on to an open-ended question and ignore it. So for perfect example, they might say, hey, you know, I don't know, you're a fix and flipper and you guys, all I've been given is low ball offers from you guys and all these, all these things, right? I'll agree. I'll be like, yeah, you know, a, a lot of fix and flippers do do give some lowball offers and da 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 da. And I'll address it, but then I move on. I don't I don't just shut up and let them talk again and let them create friction. I just move on to something else. I move on to an open-ended question that makes them start talking about something else. So in that specific example, I would say something like, Yeah, you know, I there are a lot of fix and flippers and in the area that are given low ball offers. I mean, sometimes we even do it, but I mean, what's got you thinking about selling the property? And then I move on to the next thing. So address and move on. So address and move on with an open-ended question. What is an open-ended question? It's something that makes it, it, it's a question that you can't answer with yes or no. You have to give a full explanation. So number six, now that we're getting through the process a little bit more, we're going to start to get into some awkward moments, some negotiation moments. Maybe you ask them what they want for their property, right? You're asking them for the price, or maybe you're giving an offer. And a lot of the times people get su people feel super awkward in these moments, right? Because there's a little silent period. Maybe there's like literally like a five second silent period. And as a salesperson, you're like, oh my God, what are they thinking? I, I don't know. Like, let me say something. And then they say something and mess it up, right? So somebody could be like, yeah, you know, I talked to the boss and we can give you 200. For me, when I give an offer or something like that, I'm just shutting up. I'll shut up for like 15 seconds and I'll let somebody rock. But a lot of people, you know, they'll go like five seconds without hearing from the seller. And they're like, uh, so, 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 so what do you think? Is, is that okay with you? And then they start scaring the seller away. Or, um, you know, I mean, the 200, I mean, we, I mean, we, we could maybe come up and then they end up negotiating themselves down. Just be comfortable with pausing and be comfortable with being super, super awkward. The awkwardness is actually a good thing. So be okay with feeling awkward it's actually a good thing now this is the last thing i'm going to go over there are some other things that we can go over maybe on another video but these are just the main seven techniques that, that will get you through that eight-step sales process that i dropped maybe a few weeks ago and if you haven't watched the eight-step sales process you're missing out that was probably one of my craziest videos that i dropped on my youtube yet so I use this. I use this mainly when I'm going through the, I use it throughout my whole entire process, but it really is a, is an effective strategy when you're going through the agreement. And I call this the walk in the park. Walk in the park. What does this mean? When I'm going through an agreement with somebody, I'm acting like it's just another walk in the park. It's just another day in the office. Like do, 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 do. This is easy. Yep. And then you look at number one, that's your name. Number two, that is the sales price. And then here's the closing date. And then this, and I'm just walking them through the agreement like it's just another day in the office. Like I do this all the time. Now, a lot of people, they send the agreement, they start going over and they're like, uh, so, so, so yeah, he, 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 here's your name. And then um, he, here's the close date. And then here's this. And then, the, and then they scare the seller away. So what I say all the time, could you imagine 
going to a car dealership and buying a car and you're about to sign off on your freaking new Lamborghini or whatever. Right. And you're like, yo, this is a cool moment. And then all of a sudden the salesperson starts getting hyped up once the paperwork gets written up and you're like, wait, hold on. This dude's, this dude's getting a little bit more excited than I am. Do I really want this car? <laughs> right. But the salesperson is just like, yeah. And um, so what you do is you just sign right here and here are the terms that we're looking at. And, you know, here are the keys and all these things. And they're just going through it nice, smooth and easy. The prospect feels that it's actually your responsibility as a salesperson to make that process very easy, because at the end of the day, we're not doing anything bad here. We're actually benefiting the seller. Like a lot of the times we are their best option. Right. Most of actually every single deal that I've ever done was the seller's best option. Right. So it's my responsibility to make it a nice, cool, common, collective type of situation. When I'm creating chaos, that's not cool. That's not a good user experience. So we want to be calm, cool, and collective. If this video brought you guys any value, please like the channel. Well, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I appreciate y'all. This is the seven techniques of how to get through the sales process. Like I said, I dropped a video before called the eight step sales process. It went bananas. I had people DMing me. I had people like, yo, Mike, that was so much value. The gurus are going to be mad. I don't care. I'm here to bring y'all the value. So go back to my channel and watch the eight step sales process and then watch this and then go get on the phone with sellers. It hit me in my DMs like, yo, Mike, I just locked up a deal. Let's freaking get it. Peace.